Look, man, I ain't mean no disrespect, man. I just want to make sure you're still a man, that's all. Because if any of that thing was true, man, I, I wouldn't even know how to look at you no more, man, you know? You feel me? Hey, my name is Wayman Boone. I am the writer-director of an episode called LeBert Park from the series Falling for Angels. The inspiration for telling this story is the actual location. It's sort of unusual for me. We were able to work with this great group of directors who were all assigned these different locations to tell their story. Mine happened to be LeBert Park, and when I went down there, I hadn't been there in many years, but when I went down there, there's a place called the Vision Theater that was built by Howard Hughes in like 1931 or 32. And it's just this incredible, austere place to be. And I thought as a writer, this is a great place to actually just come and sit down and write. And then that sort of became the inspiration of telling the story of thinking, okay, well, what if this character of Abraham is someone that comes here to sit and write? Yo, for real? That was nice. <laughs> I can't wait to see where this goes. Uh, thanks, Benny. I'm serious. You got talent, you feel me? Keeping this a secret from all of us who knew. <laughs> Respect. At the time, I did know someone in my life who was going through almost the exact parallel as this character of Abraham. And at first, very tragic to see, but then great to see how well he survived coming out on the other side. And just sort of under the shade of the marquee. And this place was so incredible that those scenes are pivotal to the episode itself of him coming there and inspiring to tell these stories about slowly revealing part of his life and the conflict in his life under the shade of this marquee. As I looked in the mirror, that sat tilted on my door. I've sat here for six months or maybe more. I wondered the answer to the question that my conscience refused to answer anymore. What makes a man? So I was able to assemble a really cool cast to tell this story. The first was an actor named Aaron D. Alexander, who in real life does his own stunts, and he's a very talented martial artist and will fall from buildings and land on his head. So it was really like working with a, a real Superman. My conscience said, it was important to understand the intricacies of what it means to be a man. But I am willing to cross countless rooftops and swim into rising floods to comprehend exactly what this means. The other person would be Blake Young Fountain, who's a really fine young actor. He plays the character of Tariq, who's this conflicted person that's not sure if he should be finding happiness for himself or through others. Did you even, for once, think about what he might be going through? You know how many tragedies that man has lived through? Or what it's like to be trapped inside that life? That's not my problem. That is the problem, Cassandra. Some of it. You don't know how hard it is for a straight black man. He's not straight. The other person would be Ruby D. Love. She plays the wife of Abraham, and she's sort of stuck in the middle of this firestorm and is not sure what to do. She's an extraordinary actress. Abraham, are you sleeping with a man? It's not true, Michelle. Tell me. Just tell me. Then rounding it out would be Doreen L. Hamilton, who plays the mother. And so she's sort of the matriarch and the center of the story, really. Glory to God and to my son. Thanks, Mom. And Dad? Your father missed a wonderful show. That's all that matters. I think my favorite moment from the episode was the sex scene. Now, maybe not for the reasons that people might think, it's because as a director, I show up very prepared. I have a book this thick and it's got all my storyboards and my notes and my thoughts on everything. And I remember that I made this conscious decision that I was gonna show these two characters at their most intimate without ever actually having them touch. And that became a bit of a difficult, it's a lot harder than you think to prepare and figure out how to execute this. And I was very happy with the way it came out in the end because I do feel that you believe these two characters are connected and that they just had their most intimate moment, but you never really see anything. I think another great moment is once Abraham discovers that he is discovered, he has to make a choice. And I love that in the end, where he has to go into his house, he has to see his mother. And you never actually hear what he says. And I think that that leaves it open for the audience to fill in so many blanks that don't have to be there. It's sort of a silent moment that speaks volumes. I was really enjoying that moment myself. Talk to me. I feel that what I took away from this was, they say that in story making, if you're able to explain your entire story in one or two words, and I think that this story is all about 
confronting fear. And so I think my takeaway from it, even as a writer, was how important it is, as simple as it sounds, to be brave in your choices. Just stand behind them one way or another. Because it's better to sort of die on your own sword than to just stand in your own wind and not know exactly where to go. We learn from our mistakes, and so I think that the biggest takeaway I got from this entire thing was how important it is to confront all of your fear head on. Hey, my name is Wayman Boone. I'm a writer-director in Los Angeles, and I would love for you to watch my episode, Lamert Park, from the series Falling for Angels. Please, Tariq, you're weak, and you're desperate. Why are you saying this? That's why you're here, right? I missed you. Since you don't seem to know what I need, let me tell you. I needed a man. What do you think I am? Something in between. You think you have to conform to someone else's reflection. You don't. If you can't be true to you, how exactly are you going to be true to me?